Dr. Ben Bickman, whole grains are not heart-healthy food, according to causal studies. So the idea that grains, that whole grains are heart-healthy or healthy overall for, um, for just human health is that uh, is based on correlational studies almost almost completely. And just as a reminder, and this is a topic we've touched on previously, correlational studies are those that can only find a coincidence versus causal studies or causation or clinical studies where you can actually say this thing caused another thing. Now back to the correlational studies, which is the basis of the entire paradigm that whole grains are healthy. These are the kinds of studies that uh, hand people questionnaires and then look at the health of the person. Uh, now there's a lot of, and there's conflicting evidence there. Uh, and, and in fact, I will cite one study called the PURE study, P-U-R-E. The PURE study was so, um, such a revelation because of its size and its findings. It was a massive multi-country multi study done over the past few years that involved, I think, upwards of 18,000 people across dozens of countries. And they found that grain consumption, yes, even the revered whole grains, actually predicted higher mortality. So, so there was a positive correlation between the people that it reported eating higher amounts of grains and then d just dying more from all cause. Well, that correlational evidence directly challenges the, the, the hypothesis, which is, of course, the prevailing view that eating more whole grains is going to help you live longer and better. So the pure study is one, and we have that a link to that in, in the notes of this show. Um, and now, that's correlational, and I don't like correlational evidence. I'm, a, I'm an actual... What's, what's called a basic scientist, I like to actually do an intervention, do an experiment, and then see what happens. Because then I can say, this intervention caused this result. Now, there's another study that I want to um, reference here. And this was a study done by one of my heroes, Gerald Reven, and it was published in 1987. And we also, we have a link to that one as well. That is titled The Deleterious Metabolic Effects of High Carbohydrate Sucrose Containing Diets in Patients with Non Insulin Dependent Diabetes Mellitus. Well, that's just a long way of long, long winded way of saying what does a, a low fat, high carb diet do in someone with diabetes? So, this diet it, it, it matters because they put people on the, pers the proscribed diet by the American Diabetes Association, including healthy whole grains. And, and lower fat meals. This is, of course, the type of food and the type of eating that gets a stamp of approval from the American Diabetes and the American Heart Associations. And yet what happened? Gerald Reven said it best. His conclusion over these roughly two weeks of putting type 2 diabetics on this low fat, high carbohydrate diet containing high amounts of whole grains, he reported these results document that low fat, high carbohydrate diets um, containing moderate, amount, moderate amounts of sugar, which is allowed, but again, I'm really um, in, uh, emphasizing that whole grains were uh, emphasized in the diet. Um, anyway, in similar in composition to the recommendations of the American Diabetes Association, have deleterious metabolic effects when consumed by patients with type 2 diabetes. Well, that kind of starts to not kind of, and starts to, that directly challenges this idea that whole grains are somehow going to be magically better. In this diet, it wasn't. This study was entitled Comparison of the DASH Diet and a Higher Fat DASH Diet on Blood Pressure and Lipids and Lipoproteins. And here's the kicker, a randomized controlled trial. So this is the gold standard of studies. The DASH diet matters, and it's helpful for me to point it out, because it is the most famous heart-healthy diet that has ever been invented. And, and the DASH diet is dietary uh, approaches to stop hypertension. And at the heart of the DASH diet is this these pillars of more fruits and vegetables, low-fat foods, and whole grains. So those are really the pillars of the DASH diet. And of course, as I mentioned, it's an emphasis on whole grains. Well, this study was quite clever because they, they reported to put one of the group of subjects on a DASH diet that had some of these aspects, but it was a low carbohydrate, high fat DASH diet where they were eating several times more saturated fat than the conventional low fat DASH diet. And of course, they were eating essentially no, uh, no whole grains or very, very little whole grains. So it's a direct rebuke 
of that of that emphasis on whole grains. The emphasis was rather meat and eggs and eat less whole grains. And wouldn't you know it, they had exact same improvements in blood pressure. And blood pressure matters. That's one of the biggest predictors of whether you're going to have a, a heart attack or not. But the high fat DASH diet not only lowered blood pressure to the same degree, but it also further improved lipids, like a greater reduction in triglycerides and VLDL without any other changes in LDL. So these very popular lipoproteins and lipids that are measured in the blood as markers of heart health and overall mortality got significantly better in the version of the DASH diet that was cutting its whole grains in favor of other sources of energy, like from meat and eggs. So once again, causal evidence that is challenging the long established correlational evidence that whole grains are somehow magically, uh, magically healthy. The idea that grains and whole grains are healthy is based almost exclusively on correlational studies. Correlational studies can only find a coincidence. Causal or clinical studies can actually find the cause. Correlational studies are the kind that hand people a questionnaire and then look at their health. In the PURE study, P-U-R-E, which is a correlational study, it was massive in scope, multi-country, 18,000 participants, and it took place over the past few years. The results? Higher grain consumption predicted higher mortality. This challenges the prevailing view about grains. Dr. Bickman says, as a basic scientist, I prefer to do interventional studies. Then I am able to show the cause of the outcomes. In an intervention study in 1987, Dr. Gerald Reven from Stanford University asked, what does a low-fat, high-carb diet do to someone with type 2 diabetes? The study put people on the ADA, American Diabetes Association, diet, including whole grains and low-fat. The conclusion after two weeks of this low-fat, high-carb, and lots of whole grains study with a diet similar to the ADA recommendation, he quoted Dr. Reven, this type of diet has a deleterious metabolic effects when consumed by patients with type 2 diabetes. This directly challenges the idea that whole grains are somehow going to magically give better health. In another study, a comparison of the DASH diet and a higher fat DASH diet. The DASH diet is the most famous heart healthy diet. DASH is an acronym for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. The DASH diet has these pillars, more fruits and vegetables, low fat foods and whole grains. In one group, they had on low carb and a high fat version of the DASH diet and essentially no whole grains. The emphasis was on eating more meat and eggs and less whole grains. So these popular markers of blood health and overall mortality got significantly better in the group that cut whole grain consumption and increased saturated fat by eating more meat and eggs. So, Dr. Bickman concludes, more causal evidence, which is the stronger evidence, that challenges the long-held correlational evidence, the weaker type, that whole grains are magically healthy foods. They are not. Annotated. Summarized. Easy to share with loved ones.